Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, Saya Swag. I'm Kasaya, and today I'm super excited that Sammy from Shambhala Bags asked me to help her with these videos for her secret sewing project. I'm super excited. So it is a pattern that you purchase and you get it in, um, in set certain steps. So today we'll be cutting and interfacing well, I won't be cutting on camera, but I'll show you what I cut and how I interface and I'll go over all of the pattern pieces and we will do steps one through nine. There will be three total videos. So this is video one and it is called the Cielo bag. Yay. And it is adorable. You guys are going to absolutely love it and I'm here to help. Um, so let's start going over our pattern pieces for this bag. I am using vinyl for all of my outside pieces and I am doing cotton for my inside lining and pocket pieces. I will show you one variation that I am doing because I didn't really have a thumb lock um, that the pattern calls for that I could use and I couldn't get my hands on one before this. So I am altering my top flap just a little bit to do a turn lock. So I'll show you how I did that. I will also show you how to prep the piece for if you're doing a thumb lock. So I'll show you both so you have that option. I am doing my vinyl raw edge for my bag, but she does give instructions on how to do a folded finish edge. Again, I'm gonna show you both. So you have both of those options for you. Um, okay, so let's go over our pieces. So our handles, I have two handles cut to the length that she says in the pattern. Okay, two of those. I have my flat pieces. So this is my flap if you were doing a thumb lock like she has in the pattern and I have it marked out on the back with my tape and we will be folding those raw edges in along these flat pieces so you don't have raw edges. My altered piece that I'm going to actually use for this bag, I just cut kind of a rectangle shaped flap and I'm going to leave my edges raw and I will be putting a turn lock onto my flap just because I didn't have a thumb lock. So I will show you both ways to do that flap. Okay, so for your exterior main panel, you should have three different pattern pieces for that. You are mirroring your pattern pieces, all right? So I've got these mirrored, which I think they actually go like this. I'm not sure. Um, two for the front, two for the back. So you should have two of each mirrored piece, okay? So there is one of my exterior panels. My other one, part A, that was B, this is part A. Again, four total pieces and they are mirrored because you have front and back for your bag, okay? And this is part C, which is the middle part, okay, of that front panel. And you should just need two of those. All right, and those don't have to be mirrored because it's the exact same thing front and back. All right, so two of those. I do not have those interfaced yet because I will not interface until after I have pieced the front and back main panels together. And I am using Decaville light. You can use foam, you can use fleece. That part is totally up to you. It's whatever you prefer, but I am doing mine with Decaville light. Um, I am doing piping for this bag. I am just using vinyl for my piping. I've done this before on my videos. You could put cording in it if you want. You can use actual piping if you would like. But what I'm doing is I'm taking my vinyl piece, I'm folding it in half, and I'm going to use that as my accent piping piece, okay? So I have two of those. My, which piece is this? My band on the top. No, my lining, let's do my band, my top band. All right, this is my top band. I think it goes like this. I have two of these. Now, again, there is two different ways you can do this. I'm doing mine raw edged, which means I cut mine um, one fourth inch thinner than the pattern piece. If you are folding your raw edges in, you're gonna do that by a fourth of an inch and fold all along here. And it'll be the same way that we're going to do that front flap, okay? It's the same same process of folding your raw edges in. So I'm leaving mine just raw edge on my back. So you have that option to do it either way. 
Obviously, if you're using cotton, you need to fold in your raw edge, but vinyl, you have that option to leave it alone. Okay, so here are my two gusset pieces, and I do have Decaville Light on them already out of my seam allowances. She does have the pattern piece for that interfacing, okay? And then that is all of my outside pieces, so we're gonna go to our inside pieces. This is my lining contrast band. I made it the same color as my vinyl because I like to match what's ever on the outside for me. Um, so you should have two of those. And my lining, other lining pieces, I have my gussets. Okay, there's just two of those. I just did a woven on all of my cotton pieces. I have my two main lining pieces, two of those and a pocket piece. I am just doing, I'm not doing a facing for my pocket piece. I'm just doing the zipper right on here and pulling it through. She does have amazing tutorials on how to do inside zipper pockets. If you wanna click the link that's in the pattern for that, go for it. I'm just doing a simple zipper pocket on the inside of my bag. And then I have my Decaville light all cut out and it'll be ready to be fused to my exterior panels after we have assembled them together. Let's do what hardware that you need. Hardware for this bag. I am using, I actually have these connectors on hand that she has in the pattern. All right, these are gonna be my strap connectors. I have four of those. They're pronged, which is nice. I don't have to deal with any screws. Um, so I have those. You don't have to use these type of connectors. Really, you can attach your handles however you would prefer, but this is the ones that she has in the pattern. I have two magnetic snaps for the inside of my bag because it's not zipper closure, closure it's magnetic closure. I have my label. I have my zipper for my inside pocket, and I have a turn lock for my flat because I am using a turn lock instead of a thumb lock. So whatever lock you're using for that top flat, that is what you need. Okay, so let's begin this bag. So our first step in this pattern is making the flap. I'm going to show you the way the pattern is written first and then I will show you um, my alternative way of doing it. So here is our flap. The two pieces are different. One is about a fourth of an inch longer than the other because you will be folding this raw edge over onto the other one like that. So just be aware that if they are not the same pattern piece, they are different. Okay, so I did mark my line a fourth of an inch in along both and put some double-sided tape along that. And what I'm going to do is take off my tape and then I will start folding in my raw edge along that line that is marked. And if I need to clip my curves a little bit, which I think I will, to make it lay nice. So I'm just going to do, you know, a couple of tiny clips in here. And you will have to do this on that top band piece as well. If you are folding in your raw edges, you need to clip along your curves to get a nice fold. All right. All right, so here we go. So I'm just folding this along that line. Just like that so you don't have any raw edges and go ahead and repeat on the other side so there's my first flap and go ahead and do the same thing for this one
Okay, so after that is all folded in, you will be putting the two pieces together. I'm just gonna use some more double-sided tape here. I am going to try and keep it out of my seam allowances though because I already have that one row of double-sided tape and I don't want to put a second row where I'm stitching personally. All right, so I will be clipping these two pieces together. And again, I'm going to line up the bottom because the top is going to be going over one of the other pieces, so it'll be a bit longer. They fit pretty nicely together. I don't need many clips, I don't think. You got a nice clean flap with finished edges, just like that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and sew those two together with a top stitch. Okay, so that's what you have, front and back. Now to finish off this top edge, you're just going to put another little piece of double-sided tape along this edge here, and you're going to fold that down and top stitch. And then you have no raw edges on this flap. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool method. That's why I wanted to show you. All right. So that'll be the back. I'm going to go ahead and top stitch along the top here. And this gets riveted onto your bag. Okay, now if you are doing the thumb lock, you go ahead and um, put on the top piece of the thumb lock to the end of this flap, and then you put that aside. I am now gonna show you how I am doing this flap with just raw edges. So, and I'm using a turn lock. So I made my piece just a rectangle piece I made it a little bit longer than the other flap because that thumb lock kind of, you know, acts as part of the flap. And so I wanted to make sure that mine was long enough. So I went ahead and made mine just a tiny bit longer and I just made it a nice rectangle shape. You can curve it out. I mean, it's really up to you how you want to shape it if you're doing it this way. I have never done this before. This is kind of just, I'm just kind of going off what I think will look nice. 
So I put these two pieces together. I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch all along this piece here, and then I will cut it evenly with this back piece so I get a nice even cut. Okay, so now that I have that all top stitched, I'm just going to cut it and make it all nice and even. You could also use a rotary blade and cut this. I'm just doing my scissors and getting it as smooth as I can. You could even edge coat this if you wanted to. That would look nice. It's up to you. Okay, so that will be my flap that I use for the bag. And I'm going to wait to install my turn lock piece until I know exactly where to place it. Um, since I have never made it this way before, that's the nice thing about this is that you can install you, one of your, this turn lock at the very end if you need to. So I am going to wait to install that and we will go to the next step. So our next step is making the top band. Again, I'm going to show you both ways. So this is if you don't want the raw edge, just like we did with the flap. All right, so I did the same thing. You have that line marked on your pattern piece. Transfer it onto your whatever piece you're using on your bag. And then I put tape right above that line, just like we did the flap. I cut notches into all of my curves, just like we did with the flap. Now just fold all of those raw edges in again on that line. And then that is how you will sew it onto your bag if you are doing a finished edge. All right, go ahead and start folding that up all along. And you will do this twice. You have a front and a back piece for this. I'm just gonna show you one piece, but you should do this to both front and back pieces. It really does make a difference to clip along these curves or else you will not get a nice, finish on these. So make sure you do that. Okay. There is my top piece all folded over. And that's what it'll be like on my piece. Now I am just doing my pieces without a fold. I'm doing mine on my back raw edge. So there are two different ways you can do it. So choose which way works best for you. Okay, we're on step nine. 
already we're going to complete the straps for this bag and then video one is done so i will go ahead and do my straps i have the measurements that she gives in the pattern for the straps i'm doing the same measurements i drew a line down the center i have some double-sided tape and I am just folding my raw edges into that center line and leaving a tiny bit of a space, just the tiniest bit. So when you fold it again, it folds nicely. And then after we fold our raw edges into the middle, we'll fold it once more and we'll top stitch down both sides of the strap. and then fold one more time, and that is your handle. handle one. All right. And then repeat for your second handle.
Okay, that's it for this video. This was video one and the second video for step 10 through 24 will be published on December 5th. So get this bag started and get to these steps and I will see you on December 5th and we will finish the middle part of the bag. All right, thanks for watching.